Greetings and bonjour from Paris, France. We are right here near the Louvre at a famous cafe that actually opens up the movie for the tourists. I'm on the hunt for Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp. We're gonna see if they get here in time. But y'all just stay tuned to Black Tree TV. Elise, I know the police are watching you. We have to throw them off the trail. Board the 822 at the Gare de Lyon. Pick someone my height and build and make them believe it is me. Burn this letter. It is important you follow my instructions. Miss Angelina Jolie, it's truly a pleasure and honor to, to have the, the chance to interview you and to be here in Paris, France to, to cover your, your wonderful, fun movie, The Tourist. You. Can you tell me like, what was some of the more fun uh, parts of shooting the movie, The Tourist? Um, I think well, just being in Venice was, was amazing and, and uh, felt like it was uh, you know, silly to be paid to go to work in such a beautiful place. And um, I loved working with Johnny and he's really funny and I think some of our, our, our best scenes were, were scenes where we tried to be very serious and we ended up laughing so hard that we had to, um, right. that we wasted a lot of film and we had to cut and we kept screwing up but um, we kind of hoped that that goofiness would come across somehow in the, in the movie. <laughs> I'm Elise. I'm Frank. Y'all yeah, seem to have a great chemistry on and on, on camera, and it was, I was surprised to find out that you guys just met for the first time, such big stars. It seemed like you guys would have crossed paths before now. Yeah, no, it's funny. We've never, he and Brad met years ago, um, but we'd never met. I think it's because we both tend to not leave the house very much, so we're both, we're both kind of homebodies. Speaking of homebodies, I, I know that you made your home in the south of France. Did that play any role in you deciding to jump on this movie knowing that it was gonna be shot, you know, not too far from your home? Yes, I love the locations. Yeah. I'm a sucker for a good location, so. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Another thing I really enjoyed about the, the movie was your style, like those brown gloves with the little watch, and I'm not even a oh. style person, but I was in You are a style like... person, though. I noticed when you walked in. <laughs> I thought, man, he's got well, cool style. Can you talk about the style a little bit and the dresses and everything else that you was wearing in the movie? Is just... Yeah, we had an a great designer and um, and we wanted to do something that would be a bit of a throwback to those old movies, but then still be uh, not feel too prim, have something sexy about them and fun. Um, but it was I was odd for me at first. I felt like a little girl dressed up in my mom's clothes, you know, because it was it was so dressed up. And I got the gloves. My gloves are always dirty because I'm just messy and. <laughs> Everything was always, but I eventually figured it out, and hopefully it looks cool, but. Yeah, it does, it does. How about working with the director, Florian? Florian's amazing. He's, um, he's such a smart guy. He speaks so many languages that it was, you'd go to Italy, he'd speak fluent Italian. You'd go to France, he speaks fluent French. He has a German crew, he speaks German. He's, he's, he's it drives you crazy how intelligent one person can be. Wow. Um, and. Uh, and and a really great guy, and he, he was there with his kids also. So it was it was a very it was just a very family oriented uh, production. Are you bilingual yourself? Do you speak any other language? I speak a little bit of French. Okay. Yeah, okay. my kids speak better French than I do. Well, that's not bad. That's not a bad <laughs> thing for them. Um, I wanted to get a little bit away from the movie because I know that you did some work in Haiti, and I recently also went to Haiti uh, a couple of months back. One of the things that hit me is I felt so helpless, you know, trying to help. Where it just seemed like such a, a daunting task to, to rebuild that country. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little about your emotions, like when you're in situations like that, when you're working with these charities and it just seems, you know, so daunting? How do you, you know, keep keep your your spirits up? I I, I, I identify with the feeling. I've, I I uh, the first few times I went to some countries, I got so ten years ago. I I was so overwhelmed by the the man's inhumanity to man, by poverty, by the, the um, just the, how, how much people live without and how much suffering there is in the world. And I did feel completely overwhelmed and just, just cried a lot and felt frustrated and angry. And then, and then I kept running into people who were actually in that situation and they had their ha heads held high and they were saying, we just can't cry. There's no mm -hmm. time to cry. Right. And so then you think, well, who am I to be driven by my emotions? I have to 
take her lead, this woman who's lost her kids, and there's no time to cry. Right. So you try to think about just some solution, some something, and then you're at least uh, taking a step forward. So in Haiti, for example, I've been working a lot with with a lawyer's program I'm trying to, to work on and building the justice system because I mm -hmm. think as I've traveled around a lot, there's so many different programs, but but the lack of, of understanding of the law that actually exists, the, la the lack of applic application of the law on behalf of the children and, and, uh, and women and you know everything really comes down right. to housing. Um, so to try to, to kind of enforce that and support that, so that was one thing. Um, so, but it, but it, does, it does feel, it does feel overwhelming. Well, I thank you for all the great movies you've given us, but I really thank you for the, all the work that you're doing around the world. Please continue to do it because people are watching and being inspired by your work. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you do too. I hope That's you right. run into you again. I will. It's been two years since the earthquake in Haiti. They have a new president. What do you think about the progress that's made since? Well, I think with most, I, I, I look at what Brad's been doing, and I think there's a lot of uh, good, good, good work going on. But of course, there's there's never enough, and it's always very frustrating. And um, and the push is to continue to try to to motivate more people and to continue to do more because often these situations, a few years on, get more and more forgotten. So the important thing is to keep keep people's minds and eyes on it to continue the work. Keep on doing your thing. Angelina, what do you think this film says about immigrants when it's treating the Moors different than the, the kingdom? Does you think it speaks I think to? There's a, I think there's a lot to, to uh, if, if you choose to, and I and I think my hope many people will choose to read into uh, the themes, and there are many themes uh, about uh, you know people respecting each other's differences, people seeing each other as equal, and those who don't are usually people who come from great fear, uh, and that's that's Michelle's character. She's. She's not acting out of intellect and wisdom. She's acting out of fear, uh, but she's and, and she's attacking those who are different. And I hope we show in this film that the true strength and the ones you root for are the ones who are fighting for uh, the real equality and balance and the togetherness that everybody should have in this world. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Great question.